Greetings, fellow humans, and welcome to Sam and Max Hit the Books. I'm Max. I'm Sam. And we're here today to discuss the comics that came out on the 5th of February in 2020. Um, real quick, I want to do a drop report to let everybody know that we are officially done with uh, Justice League. We won't be picking up the new Justice League relaunch. Um, Fantastic Four, uh, so we're done with that arc and book, and uh, the Terrifics. It, it had its chance. <laughs> We True. Give, we give it two arcs under the new writer and right. uh, couldn't make it. No. Um, but uh, so let's get right into it with the lightning round uh, for this week. Uh, shall I begin? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Uh, all right. So first up, it's going to be issue eight of Usagi Ojimbo, which um, is only lightning round because Usagi is <laughs> always a medium level of quality that it, it never goes below. Like right. It's at least above the line. And this one was... Uh, like you get a little bit of history, as Stan likes to put in, uh, just uh, as we learned a little bit out about the creation of the uh, what are they tatami mats? Yes, the mats. Yeah, the tatami mats. They take are, two years. And uh, you learn a little bit about Japanese architecture and how rooms are measured in how many tatamis you can fit in a room. <laughs> And uh, yeah, yeah just, I liked all that. It's just very solid. Uh, we got some good action on our way. Had some good fights in this issue. Yeah, uh, it's an eight. Yeah, I'd also give it an 8. Just uh, continues to be great every time. Always love Usagi. Next up, we got uh, Batman, James Tiny in fourth, and... Uh, Guyon! Guyon Marsh. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so this one is interesting. Real quick, um, what do you think of ribbed bat cape? Uh, you know, I'm okay with it. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, so I was talking <laughs> to somebody else who was like, this almost made me stop reading. <laughs> that I mean, yeah, it's different, but it's not like a huge violation to me. To me, it's like I want to make, let people know that if he does the Christopher Nolan movie thing and uses his cape as a glider, like we all see Batman do, right? Exactly. Like it's doing the tech part, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's for the glider. Uh, yeah, so Batman, he's investigating and he's being led around, and Lucius has him steal a car. With the pocket Batmobile? With the pocket Batmobile. It, so I guess all these cars are made with uh, the, the ability to project a Batmobile on their outside. No, the projector does do the uh, all of the projection itself. Oh, it's of course, just, that, because he puts it on the hood. Right, It's all, they only made it Lucius's car so that Bruce wouldn't have to steal a car. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like, it, yeah, maybe it would work Lucius mentions, any. like, just to remind you, sir, this car has none of the usual outfittings <laughs> of an actual Batmobile. Yeah. Right, which uh, I like that they put that in. But, yeah. you know, Deathstroke versus Penguin, didn't get to see that, but it was over real fast. Yeah, because Penguin had the oxygen drain from the room they were in. Right. Which I'm glad they didn't show us, because, yeah, that's boring action. Just yeah. move on. And Catwoman did some stuff on the sidelines. Uh, yeah, what's up with Joker? Joker who's, yeah, he's buried and dead and still talking. So I guess they're going with the Joker actually was, quote-unquote, killed during the King run. And Seemingly so. Which is weird, because I feel like we've seen him... Several times since then, but maybe I'm incorrect about that. <laughs> I know. Uh, I give it a six. Uh, yeah, I give it a five. Cool. It was all right. Yeah. Uh, and then last for the lightning round is Copra, issue five, which uh, is cool because we're getting some of the weird new gods the aliens, the Ochazone, coming down. And it's like hilarious how much they actually do look like some of the new gods. Like, Yeah, uh, but at the si same time, are freaky. Totally gross. It's essentially <laughs> the new gods, but also Bloodborns. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, and I thought that this issue was interesting. As always, the color treatment has so much to do with how readable a Michelle Fife comic is. Right. That's the thing. I mean, I'd love it if he got a colorist and just he continued to do the the artwork himself. Right. And then have somebody else doing a thing because it almost seems sometimes like he's just spending more time on some pages than others. Yeah. But exactly. only with the colors, not with the line art. Right. <laughs> so uh, it's fine. It's a six for me. Yeah, it's a five for me. It's it's on the edge, honestly. Uh, yeah. we, we, we may not continue with Cobra much longer. Right. I want to like it. I really want to like it. Understandable. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that does it for the lightning round, and I'm going to bring us into uh, the regular reviews, uh, longer reviews, with uh, issue one of The Immortal Hulk Great Power. Should be the only issue as well. Yeah, it, I, I thought as much. It seemed like a, a one-shot. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, this is a this is a good little bit of Spider Man is the Hulk comic book. It's interesting. Right here. That's by uh, Tom Taylor and George Molina. Yes. 
And yeah, somehow Loki forced the power out of uh, Bruce Banner, the Hulk power. Right. He used the new continuity to do it because he's never noticed it before. But now, for some <laughs> reason, he can see the energy and the conduit of energy that forms the Hulk and he yes. pushed it out of Banner. Right. And that seems to be con- uh, connected to Hulk's new power of being able to just absorb gamma out of things. Seems like those things are related. They're yeah. really sciencing it up in an interesting way. <laughs> they are. And uh, yeah, because the Hulk got fart- forced out of Banner, it, uh, it found Spider-Man and went into him, which is hilarious. Spider-Hulk. <laughs> yeah. And I love how Spider-Man's outfit, because it is spandex, <clears throat> like it does a pretty good job of stretching. Like it tears open, but not as much as normal clothes would. Right, it's just at the joints. Right. <laughs> And yeah, I love how the mask gets just halfway up. Right, it's just pushed up like that, and he blows out a, a lens. Yeah, exactly. The uh, Guess the Fantastic, Fantastic Four. Four were good in this. Uh, I think it's funny that the Hulk Spider Man is going around uh, talking about Peter Parker, and uh, they're trying to like uh, tell him to shut up. Right, because <laughs> nobody's supposed to know. But I figure the Fantastic Four know. They the thing is that. Peter used, he used the device to remove his identity from everyone's brain. So really, only Hulk knows. And I, but I, I do think the Fantastic Four do know. Yeah, somebody was like Peter. No. Yeah, yeah. The Fantastic Four know, and Hulk knows, but B- Banner doesn't know. And that's what confused me because when they have the scene where that shows that Banner doesn't think Spider-Man would be smart, and then Spider-Man is smart, I was like, wait. How does Banner not know? He's had to have been in a room planning something smart with Spider-Man during one of these many crossovers. Oh, okay. I guess, like, if you forget that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, you also forget about any factoids in your brain that have to do with Peter Parker being science nerd Peter Parker yeah. and Spider-Man. I thought it was funny. It was an all right bit. There was a couple of jokes that didn't land for me in this issue, but um, I, I did enjoy that quite a bit. Yeah. And then the uh, the bit at the end uh, with their great plan of powering Banner up somewhat, I guess, with gamma rays. They right. shoot gamma rays at him, and he turns into just a, a big, green, muscly Bruce Banner. Yeah, he's like half Hulk. Right, half Hulk. And he looks awesome. Yeah, and because of that, he is able to absorb the power back. Which, right. Also cool. So the longer they fight, the more he becomes Hulk, and Spider Man goes back to being just old Peter Parker. Peter Parker. Now it's interesting. Do you think mm-hmm. that Banner was still mentally in control when he was half Hulk, or do you think that Green Door Hulk was already through by that point, and that's him talking? It's really hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> I know because Banner's so like we hardly ever see Banner during Immortal mm-hmm. Hulk at all. Right. And. Once he's fully Hulk, I mean, he's he's just talking normal, so... Yeah, because that's how he is now. <laughs> yeah, Even and that if... Banner would say all these things, too. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're very similar. I feel like this is the first thing we've read with Immortal Hulk in it that wasn't written by Ewing. Because even that Carnage tie-in one-shot was written by Ewing. Well, there was that Fantastic Four with the Thing and the Hulk. Uh, oh, the Hulk you're right. That. Yeah, I didn't like him in that. <laughs> they, had to, they had to jump through so many hoops to explain why he was doing that. It's true. It's like walked <laughs> through the ocean. Yeah, because, yeah. Which yeah, is anyway. funny because this one also ends with him the exact walking same out way. into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, that I thought was kind of funny, actually. Like, if all the one-shots always end with that. Right, it's almost hilarious. like the Hulk is Godzilla <laughs> in, in the one-shots. I, I do enjoy Comes that. Comes up out of the ocean, goes back into the ocean. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed this a lot. Uh, I give it a 7. Yeah, I'm going to give it a 7 as well. I wasn't going to get it. Oh, except for it was a light week, but then the guy at the store was like, you should get this. I thought it was pretty good. So nice. good kudos, job, guy. Kudos, kudos to him. Um, so next up, we're going to talk about issue two of Thor by Johnny Cates and Nick Klein. This is a week late because we were shorted last week. But uh, Okay. So this one is very interesting because it seems like it's Cates sort of doing a light version of Hickman's Avengers run and doing like a here's the justice league because we're doing a multiversal thing so of course the dc universe exists because this planet that we see getting destroyed it's clearly has the daily planet building oh and yeah you uh, a sun god a god of emerald light a god of dark perhaps batman right a god of the ocean a god of speed with lightning speed it's okay yeah we, we see uh, the justice league's universe get destroyed by the eternal night <laughs> 
Yeah, and he even says something about a uh, yeah, the universe, like so many before it, is protected by leagues of gods. So okay, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're totally right about that. Okay. I missed it completely. For thou, they too will look into the eyes of the Black Winter, and they will see the stone-faced avatar of their one true end. For them, their Omega, the one who is Dark Side, <laughs> is the uh-huh. Omega beams. Wow, well, that, that's better than I thought it was. <laughs> so, um, I enjoyed this comment very much. So. Yeah, it's, it, it's interesting. I like the idea that Thor, because he is Thor, is the only person who's able to retain almost all of his own personality when he's turned into a Herald of Galactus. Right, not, not a slave almost at all. Right, like, we've seen that other Heralds are able to break out mm-hmm. of Galactus' uh, control, but... Sure, but it just doesn't seem to affect... Uh, Thor very much. And he fucks up Galactus with his hammer in this issue. That is, yeah, it's great. When it goes through his hand and his fingers are coming off, it just looks great. Galactus, yeah, he's really, he's having a hard time. He's already got only a stump on one arm. And yeah, he's, he's missing his an ear antenna. Right, he's weak and he's up against Thor with the power cosmic. Thor, right, because so Thor's powered up and Galactus is powered down. Um, we learn a little bit about Thor's ability to use the ravens as avatars of his voice across the galaxy and send messages to places. Yeah. Yeah, very cool. Uh, Thori appeared from the Jason Aaron run, so I guess he's going to be around. I love Thori. Thori's great. He offered to kill a bunch of people to help with the overcrowding. That's what he does. (laughs) (laughs) And then you get to the end of the issue, and, uh... I mean, I feel like we even talked about it when we talked about the first Thor. Like, how long will Donny Cates be able to resist adding in everyone's favorite character, Beta Ray Bill? And uh, here he is with a new look and uh, looking dope. He's got his battleship with its big old guns and he's got his hammer. And Yeah, and he's grinning. <laughs> well, I don't know if you can make any other facial expressions. <laughs> but uh, yes, Beta Ray Bill, who I'm sure we will have a classic uh, fight then team up. Yeah, probably. Almost, good stuff. Almost assuredly. Uh, I quite enjoyed this issue. Very good. Uh, yeah. I'm going to give it a 7. I'd actually give this one an 8. I liked it a lot. Cool, cool. Take us home. And we are finishing up with the 12th and final issue of Ma- Martian Manhunter by uh, Steve Orlando and Riley Rosmo. And yeah, I'd let, I say, uh, you know, it, it took a long time to get here. Yes. But I feel like it really pays off in this issue if you stuck through to here. The the run probably could have been half as long or Agreed. maybe maybe eight issues That's what I was to say too. everything that it needed to say to be here for this issue right here. Yeah. And yeah, this issue ends up being a lot of fun. The mind battle between... Manhunter and uh, Charn. 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 <laughs> yeah, such a Charn. Such an ugly name. Charn. <laughs> He's another Bloodborne. <laughs> <laughs> so true. But they have the best uh, mental battle at, ever, as they're just like throwing their own despair and uh, horror at each other. Yeah. What does Charn call it when John shoots him with a thing? He's it's like a mind missile or something. A moment missile. A moment missile. He's yeah, gonna shoot him with John's own life. memory of Charm getting sentenced. <laughs> but yeah, give me more of that. Yeah, that's good stuff right there. I like their battle. John finally getting his heroic luck again. Yeah, he he was finally able to be the Martian Manhunter he always needed to be, and that's a lot of fun too. And uh, Mead stuff is uh, also good. It all worked fine in this issue. I agree totally that every problem with this run is how much it was decompressed. Yeah, And exactly. if it was a little tighter. And honestly, at the end, okay, it's interesting to have John... Um, go back to Mars? Well, not. I know he's going to go back to Mars, but like in this, he's also going to still be John Jones, but everybody on the police force knows that John Jones is dead and <laughs> yes. that he is the Martian Manhunter. Right. But only in this city, as long as nobody watches the news uh, that happens in this city. Right. And that explains the other thing, which is I am sort of surprised that this doesn't end with him getting like a call from Superman or something, because it remains very unclear if this is supposed to have anything to do at all with the wider DC universe. I, I just feel feel like this is, you know, compared to now the 70s and current Superman would, would have been, you know, a baby at that time. Interesting. Because what this, at the end of the day, this feels like the 12th episode of the Netflix Martian Manhunter show. 
You know what I mean? Yeah, but it's such an the origin. Pacing. Right, it's such an origin, though. That, too. But that's how they would do it. The first season. It is season. how they would do it. It's true. Stretch it out to make it Damn. 12 pieces and make it so that it's this character and as much of the origin as you can squeeze in without right. actually involving any of the other stuff. Right, and just copy the, the art style as, as best you can for television. Yeah, that would be awesome. I'd watch that. Yeah, but I would want it to be eight episodes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, <laughs> I'd be okay with ten. Twelve is a little much. Right. Um, so I, I like this fight. I'm going to go ahead and give it a six. Still above average. I give this one a seven. Excellent. Cool. All right, well, uh, we have done it. I, I hope everybody's enjoying the slightly faster pace of our show. Um, if you are, let us know. If you're not, especially, please let us know. <laughs> um, yeah, we're not married to it. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yes, thanks, everybody, for listening, and we will be back in the very near future with even more comic reviews. And sometimes less. <laughs> <laughs>